Hey guys, I'm- no! How's it going everyone? I am Verage Riven, and this is another deck profile, this time on Buster Bladers. Now, if you remember in one of my earlier videos, I pretty much said this. I put a deck together. Needless to say, I've been going through different variants of this. I've been focusing on the Trap Heavy variant at first, but then a friend of mine has said to go with this variant a little bit more, apparently because, um, well, you'll understand why in a sec. Buster Blader is pretty much a lockdown-based deck. It focuses on the lock between uh, Buster Blader Destruction Swordsman, Buster Dragon, and the, um, Buster Whelp Destruction Sword that you equip to Buster Blader so that you can lock your opponent out of the extra deck. It sounds good on paper, but um, you just have to see in order to uh, believe, believe it, to be honest. But this is my um, build for this uh, deck. It's not the best build. I still think the trap variant is a little bit better, but I'm going to be trying out this one because um, I do like the idea behind it. So let's get going into it. Of course, a Buster Blader deck has to have three Buster Bladers, of course, obviously. But in all honesty, you're next to never going to summon him. He's only going to be on the field for only a little bit of time, and even when he is on the field, he's only going to be on there for a little bit of time, or to finish your opponent off the game. So, you're not going to see him as much. He's mostly going to be thrown to the graveyard for fusion fodder, or for some other fodder. So, afterwards we're running, of course, for one Buster Blade of the Destruction Swordsman. Buster Blade of the Destruction Swordsman is actually very simple. He's a lot better than the original Buster Blader, but he doesn't count as a Buster Blader. What he does is actually is very simple. When a monster is destroyed by battle, that also means that it does not include him, he can equip that monster onto himself. Then, at one point during either player's turn, he can... My mistake, at your turn, you can remove one of the monsters equipped to him to pretty much destroy all monsters of the same type of the equipped monster that was equipped to him. So he's very powerful when it comes to that effect. But like the original Buster Blader, you're not going to see him on the field for the most part. Now for the main starter of the deck, well... You're playing Buster Bladers completely wrong if you're not playing Whelp. And I mean that in a pure Buster Blader sense. If you're talking about the Crusadia variant that uses a Buster Blader traps as engines, then yes, you can do that. But if you're playing Buster Bladers as a pure and pure unknown deck, and you're not running this guy, something's mentally wrong with you. <laughs> Needless to say, what Welp does is amazing. He automatically fetches a destruction, uh, a destruction Sword card from your deck to your hand. That's any of them, which is already a good start in amongst itself. But at the same time, what he also can do is one of two things. He can tribute himself to summon a Buster Blader from your hand or graveyard, or if a Buster Blader monster is on the field, you can special summon him from the graveyard by discarding one Destruction Sword card. So... That's already a powerful enough effect. The one downside, though, is his search effect upon his summon. He can only do that on his normal summon, which is oops, which is um, a little bit of an unfortunate downside, but a fair exchange, if you ask me. And uh, next card, I somehow have five of these cards, but I'm running three copies of the Destruction Sword Dragon Buster. Everyone knows what this card does right now. He's Domain on Legs, but what makes him better in this deck is that 1. He's searchable, 2. He can be equipped by the Buster Dragon Monster as well as Union Carrier, 3. He works with a deck through and through, which is already powerful in amongst itself. Now we're running into the more interesting aspects of the deck, and this is where things um, I originally thought was going to be actually kind of unique, because I am running Two copies of the Shooter, and as well at the same time, three copies of Adhara. Odd ratios, yes, but there's a reason behind it all. Adhara, you can just pretty much special someone from your hand and activate Wear Out Thou to fetch Buster Dragon from your deck. That's already a good enough combo starter. But let's say, for instance, you opened both of these two, and you have a way of getting the Destruction Sword, Sword Buster Blade, a Fusion Monster, on the field. And that's where this guy comes into play. He's mainly in here because of his level, and so is him for his level, but he is also in here at the same time because he's a tuner. Do you see where I'm going with this? So, these ratios are odd, yes, but they actually help out with the deck nonetheless. Finally, for some hand traps, I'm just running Double Ash Blossom. Uh, that's all I'm running. Basically, everything else in the stack acts like a big uh, lockdown thing anyways. So... Afterwards, I'm running two Destruction Sword Fusion. There's a reason why I'm running this at two, because let's say for hypothetical reasons, I already have access to the Buster Dragon without setting up the whole Buster Trap lineup. 
This card acts as Super Poly in your opponent's turn, but here's the main kicker behind this card that it has an advantage over, besides from Super Poly. Super Poly can only use monsters on the field. However, this card's wording is equal to polymerization, meaning that it could use materials from both a hand or field. And if you're going to question me on that department, I looked up poly and I read it word for word when it comes to its fusion aspects effect. It's literally the same as this card. And even Fluffles can even get that down right as well, because I've seen Fluffle players use materials from both hand and field with polymerization to work with themselves and this is worded in the same way because polymerization says field or hand so this card is, is um, text the same way well worded the same way and of course it can be used in the same manner meaning that if my opponent has a um, a monster on the board regardless whether it's a dragon or not, it's going to become a dragon with Buster Dragon, and if it's just a dragon in amongst itself, even better, I can flip this up, use a Buster Blader in my hand, along with that dragon monster, there's my Buster Dragon Fusion monster. Following along with this aspect, I am running Triple Foolish Burial. Goods. <laughs> and a One Foolish Burial, since I already mentioned Foolish. So then, it's obvious why you run Foolish Burial. It sets up the lock perfectly, but this card also sets up for more things in the deck as well. Primarily the Destructions, the destruction Sword of Memories, because as soon as you get that into the graveyard, you don't need to send it off a prologue, you can just send something completely different. So, it's obvious why these are in here. These are big play extenders nonetheless. Uh, the one Monster Reborn, because it's kind of helpful with uh, bringing out Buster Blader just for generic purposes. Card Destruction, just so that I can mulligan, but at the same time, a lot of the cards benefit from being in the graveyard. I was considering Performer Pal Papa Ripper, but I want to make sure that I go one for one with cards like Card Destruction rather than um, rather than a big neg with, um, with Papa Ripper. Because at least, because here's my thought process behind Card Destruction versus uh, Papa Ripper. With Papa Ripper, you still have to send your cards for cost. Card Destruction is not a cost, it's all one effect. So, if my opponent sees this slap down and they want to make sure they keep their hand, they have to ash this as soon as possible. So, Card Destruction does help with a deck, yes, but it's also a serious threat to your opponent. So, hence the reason why I'm using Card Destruction as is. Upstart Goblin, just so that I can draw. And finally, free called by the graves, just so that I can get some plays going off. And I'm sorry for constantly knocking the camera. Finally, to round off the spells, double wear out thou. It really helps out a lot in this deck, nonetheless. Okay, so moving along into the traps, we're running triple prologue of a destruction sword. This card is the main play extender for any Buster Blader deck. Just in place, flipping this up, send it a destruction sword cal uh, card. Preferably memories, we'll get to that in a sec, and a Buster Blader monster to summon the Buster Dragon. Then you use Destruction Sword Memories, and what this card does is something fantastic. It banishes itself to then banish a Buster Blader and a Dragon Monster to bring out the Buster Dragon. Uh, do I need to explain why this card is just so goddamn good? Hopefully I don't, because um, those two work hand in hand together like crazy. Finally, we're running the one Destruction Sword Flash. It's a very good board wipe, so having it on the field and just simply board wiping everything to oblivion, it's uh, actually a nice feature. The only downside is for the Buster Blader Fusion Monster, but we can easily bypass that. Finally, to round things up with the traps, Triple Solemn Judgment. You want to make sure that your play goes off, so if it's stopped by any means, flipping this up is just a good way to say, no, I'm going off. Alright, for the extra deck, we are running two of each of uh, the Buster Blader Destruction Swordsman and Buster Dragon. It's odd ratios, yes, but I wanted more extra space uh, in my extra deck. Plus, at the same time, I have ways of properly summoning out Buster Dragon, and um, Buster Blade of the Destruction Swordsman, as soon as he's on the field, it's going to be hard to get rid of him anyway, so as soon as the second one comes out on the field, that's going to make things even harder. It's not the best uh, ideal ratios, you would want to run three of three and three. I do have three Buster Bladers, but I only own these two of Buster Dragon, but this is a ratio that I feel comfortable with as of right now. Next up, I was running two, but I decided to cut down to one, mainly because of lack of availability of seeing it, and that was, um, and that is, well, uh, hold on, let me just uh, get its name. Protector Whelp of a Destruction Swordsman. So, 
What Welp does is actually something quite fascinating that can actually help out with the deck, and it's something along the lines of this. It sends a Destruction Sword card from Deck to Graveyard. The one reason that we're running Destruction Sword Flash as well is primarily because it has a negation effect when it's in the graveyard, which is already a good aspect for it. But at the same time, what Welp does is that uh, if a monster in your battle phase does not attack, you can use that monster's attack to burn your opponent. I should possibly mention this as well, but the Send uh, the Destruction Sword card from Deck to Graveyard with Welp also allows you to special summon a Buster Blader from your hand. So, with Buster Blader the Destruction Sword Fusion Monster not being able to attack directly, Welp just pretty much lets you attack directly anyways at the end of a battle phase, which I can't help but to find hilarious. There can even be incidences where a monster is just simply too big, but you have enough attack power to punch over it when you don't have um, the Buster Lock on board. You can simply use this card effect to target the Buster Blade or um, Fusion Monster, and it can just simply wipe out your opponent's life points there and then. Uh, finally, Link Monsters. One Crusadia Avermax. Avermax is in here primarily because of the aspect that he is a nuisance to get over. There's a lot of annoying cards in the meta as of right now, and Avermax is just annoying to get over, so we're running him just because. Same with Unicorn, he's just good at bouncing things back to the deck. Simple as that. And also, one of the, each of, I need to stop knocking my camera, Phoenix and Severus. Severus destroys special summon monsters, Phoenix destroys spell and traps. I don't think I need to explain why those are good. Whoops. IP Mascarena, just so that I can make the um, Avermax a little bit more beefier with her, but also the Unicorn more beefier with her. She's just good in how she does her job. Uh, Double Link Karipo. This is in here just in case I need to get a... Just in case I need to get Welp in the graveyard as quickly as possible, because you're mainly going to be using Welp as fusion material for the Buster Dragon fusion monster. And finally, just some synchros to round things up on the extra deck. Um, one hot red, dra red dragon archer in abyss. Um, just negates one card in the field once per turn. Really, really powerful and really easy to bring out. The other one, Tuna, as well as uh, the, the um, Buster Dragon. It also just makes uh, some use out of Buster Dragon because Buster Dragon is both weak to, um, in terms of attack power, and at the same time, and at the same time, if you bring it out with a trap card, it'll destroy itself in the um, end phase. And finally, just for some more level eight targets uh, for Synchroing, I'm running one of each of Skylight and the Draco Berserker of Atenyi. That is it for my Buster Blader deck profile, guys. It is not a um, meta-breaking deck as of right now, only because Adamantipater and Eldritch are in the meta game, and, um, and Dragon Link is not seen as much as play. But honestly, with these decks, um, with this deck being almost like a check for uh, Dragon Link, and um, just having a very good lock that helps you gain advantage of the metagame over other decks like uh, Adam Ancipator and uh, Eldlich, the combo variant of Eldlich at least. This deck actually helps out a lot, and I actually hope that you um, guys have enjoyed this uh, video. And if you have, uh, if you have any feedback on uh, trying to make this deck even better, I will accept any feedback in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, punch that notification bell of mine just so that you can't miss any of my videos, and until next time, I bid you all adieu.